always enjoy the CIET workshops. Good afternoon, all of you. I know it's difficult after lunch. Uh, as you all know, today's session is about interactive content. So we have to be uh, really, really active to create or to listen about the interactive content before I really start. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Be uh, before I really start, I would like to share uh, one uh, screen where you gave uh, answers. I think, uh, I don't know how many of us are here, around 100 and maybe around 100, but then I got hardly a few responses, but still I would like to share that screen with you all. <clears throat> Yeah. So I asked, have you heard? And the majority says uh, no. I asked about a tool. So majority says uh, not really. And I asked like, uh, uh, did you ever create H5P content? That's also merely uh, 6%. That is only two members said and 28 members said no. So around 30 people among 100 are uh, haven't heard or haven't created uh, interactive content using that tool. So this gives me a clear cut idea that how I should go about uh, talking about any tool in the session so it will be easy for me to to address that that's why i asked you all to fill that form it really gives me uh, uh like what you say uh, a good uh, overview of uh, uh, what my participants are aware of so that depending on that i can uh, continue my session let me share my screen here <clears throat> Let's try to be active uh, in this session as much as possible. Okay, I'll be asking some questions in between or if you have any questions you can post. Uh, okay, welcome all. This session is all about uh, interactive content and its creation. So I divided this session like... Uh, around one, one hour, two one and a half an hours that we will be talking and or I will be talking or I will be asking some questions and then uh, I'll be taking some inputs from you and I'll be talking. And then uh, from there onwards, we will have a hands-on session. I'm pretty sure a takeaway of this session, especially this afternoon session is that you all will be 100 odd people over there who, who haven't heard about the tool also will have a very good insight about not only using a tool to create interactive content, but also you will be able to generate that with open licensing. I hope you all are aware of uh, open licenses and how to use and how to find them. Even if you have any doubts on that, you can ask me in a Q&A session. Okay, here comes our first slide. So here I would like to know what is that phrase that comes to your mind the moment we talk about the content in teaching learning process. I really like this a session about open educational resources. That's where uh, we concentrate more on uh, openly available educational resources already not to start from the scratch. Similarly, even interactive content, we have uh, very good repositories uh, where these kind of uh, contents are available with open licensing. Okay, before we really discuss about all these things, I would like to know what is that one phrase that comes to your mind or a word that comes to your mind the moment uh, we talk about or we think about interactive content in teaching learning process as a teacher. I've seen uh, in the form that there are teachers who are teaching from class one to 10 and also D8 students. Pretty happy to meet you all. So let me see the chat once. Responding to the content, okay. 
question and answer or a discussion, okay, live interaction, exchange of ideas in two ways, that is communication. See, speaking visuals, okay. Effective learning. Uh-huh. Displaying of videos, pictures in the class. Yeah. That is uh, about uh, discussing, right? You are, you are displaying and then you are talking about it. Where the students can participate with. Okay. Any type of a material that convey its message by encouraging user participation. Mm -hmm. Very good. By the way, uh, I can speak Hindi too. If you are, uh, if you are all having any issues, uh, I can talk uh, in Hindi, Telugu, and English, and I can understand few other South Indian languages, and also to, to some extent uh, Bengali too, in Marathi. Okay. Oh, a lot of uh, two-way communication. Okay. Responding to each other. HYP is also used for evaluation work. I'll clear this point, uh, Ramesh sir. Okay. We'll talk about it. Students active participation. It has the scope of the learner to ask, interact. Okay. Technology. Okay. Even without technology, we can interact with the class, right? In a regular classroom. Activity based, yes. A uh, person interacts with the content to know his understanding level. Okay, so here interaction means only uh uh, uh You're you're thinking that it's only with uh, the content. Okay, good. Okay, expressing ideas by students freely. Okay, you are giving a choice and chance for them to express. Understanding the concept through interactive content very easy to all types of learners. Okay. But we are talking about here one phrase. Actually, I asked many of you are typing entire sentence. But never mind. Very understand method with clear itself. Okay. Learning by doing. Mm -hmm. Just me. Sikne or sikhane wale dono bhaag le sake. Okay. Right. Debate, engaging. Okay. Hands on experience or conveying something. Fantastic. It's all about. The communication, right? Where uh, the involvement of users in exchange of information. These are the two key um, phrases uh, that we can say. This is from the dictionary um, definition that it is given for our interactive content is involvement of users in the exchange of information with computers and the degree to which this happens. It is very important. Okay, well, what does it mean to the degree to which this happens? At what level that happens? Okay, in a face-to-face -face classroom, at what level? To, to Up to what extent that can happen? Okay, how much involvement, how much activity that you are providing for the user to participate within that? Okay, within that session. When it comes to a hybrid classroom or an online, fully online scenario, so to... What extent to which degree that interactivity is provided when in a content perspective, okay, from a content perspective, whether the interaction is only about play, pause, rewind, and listen to it if it is an audio, watch it and listen it if it is a video, or if it is a textual content, it's only going forward and backward or clicking on certain links. But when it comes to Another level, a level more of an interaction. Okay, when you go to anybody outside and like to build a course, interactive course for you, then they ask you like at, to, at what level, ma'am or sir, you want your course to be. So usually in an e-learning parlance, they say that level zero, one, two, and three. Level zero is that's what we just talked about, a text and going forward and a backward um, with, with uh, some links in it. But then when it comes to level one, there will be some uh, um, audio also to some extent, some video will also be there. And then another level is that where your audios or videos can be uh, interrupted to ask a question or to seek some uh, information. That is where the communication can happen. Right. When we consider this interaction in the teaching learning process, actually several factors that comes to mind. This can be effective communication, 
between the teacher and students, right? Or between the content and students or between peers, that is student and students. And also what comes to our mind is active learning strategies, right? Somebody already responded about it, active learning strategies. What does it mean? Where uh, we are providing an opportunity for the user, for our student to communicate with us, actively participate within that scenario. Opportunity for collaboration. Okay, provision of uh, timely or uh, constructive feedback. Okay, when we talk about uh, feedback, I want to uh, also talk about uh, one important aspect of a feedback that <clears throat> feedback not only important to provide a constructive feedback to our learners, whether it is a fully online scenario or in a classroom scenario, it is very, very um, effective when you, as a teacher, when you observe to what extent that feedback help your user to implement that knowledge for her or him or to, for them to gain some knowledge, improve their no, no, learning curve, right? So that's when feedback really uh, is, plays a, a major role. And that is where we say that that is a constructive feedback. Okay, coming to again, interaction. Engaging and interactive teaching methods are essential really to promote a comprehensive understanding of a subject material or the topic that you will be teaching to your students. Right, I hope you all agree with this. Uh, when, we, when we just take this uh, one liner of uh, this definition, we talk a lot about this interactions where um, it, uh, the it requires the students to interact not only with the teacher or with the peers, but also with the content. Okay, let me tell you about uh, this etymology also. Interactivity is a word that came from um, Latin language where interactio, which means um, inter, means common between and actio means action. So we can say, we can conclude interactivity is one of the characteristics of the dialogue forms of processing learning. Okay, when it comes to a different uh, uh, types of interactivity in uh, our learning environment, teaching learning environment, we have to definitely quote M.G. Moore's three types of learning interactivities that happens. That is learner-learner between the student and the student, between the student and the teacher, between student and the content. This theory proposed long, long way back in 1989. When we see in a passive, uh, uh, passive uh, uh, interaction like the webinar now going on to some extent there is some interaction uh, you can chat you can talk you can unmute and talk sometimes too right so but uh, the truth is uh, this type of uh, interaction where instruction where when only teacher is talking you know that really won't make a great impact on the learners or on the audience of the meeting or in a uh, scenario like this so for effective learning and retention, you need interaction. No doubt about it. I hope you all agree with this. So that is what makes the experience more interesting and more valuable for the learner. For example, I just asked you now about what is that one phrase that comes to your mind when we talk about interaction or interactivity in a teaching learning environment? Then everybody posted their thoughts, their views about it. So that uh, when we observe these views, right, we get some ideas too. We may learn or unlearn. It might happen. So interaction between learner and learner will happen. Learner and teacher will definitely will take place. So these are the three big types of interaction we have to keep in mind in a current hybrid way of uh, learning scenarios, learning mode, we can say it, because these are very essential uh, to engage our learners according to MG mode. They are learner-learner interaction. These opportunities are created for learners to interact with each other also. For example, in a 
uh, in a scenario like this, sometimes we can have breakout rooms. We can uh, break learners uh, depending upon uh, or randomly or depending upon the subject they teach or the classes they teach and we give them a task, right? So where the learner learner will interact in a online or a hybrid learning scenario. When it comes to a face-to-face -face also, you might give some projects where a student's uh, you will make them groups and they interact with each, with each other and then they present the final report. Similarly, between learner and teacher, it could be directly a teacher addressing the entire group of a class, like now I'm addressing all of you, or sometimes it is possible one-on-one one -on -one interaction, right? So when it is a face-to-face, -face, yes, you know how it happens. Even in an online learning scenario, it happens through various ways and modes of communication when you have a learning management system or um, content management system that your institution provides you then you can interact with the entire group with one announcement or you can use this uh, communication technique uh, to interact with each learner to talk or to give them a feedback or to talk them or to talk to them about their learning curve or about their progress Right. When it comes to learning, a uh, learner and the content, that is the important uh, um, uh, topic that today we will be discussing about it is that how the learner interacts with the content. OK, that's also important. And then when learner interacts with the content, what kind of feedback that it is giving them? That's also important. It all depends upon what kind of a tool you use, what kind of an environment you use, what kind of a topic you selected, and the subject you teach, and at what level that you are teaching. So we have to consider, we have to talk about all these three uh, major learning, um, uh, what we say, uh, types that interactions that we have to consider and which are very much essential for learning and engagement according to M.J. Moore. So when we talk about interactive learning, interactivity in a teaching learning environment that requires active participation of both instructor and also student, that is a teacher and a learner, teacher and the student, definitely promoting active learning. Also, sometimes we will be able to, with interactive content, with a kind of uh, environment that you are in, with kind of technology that you are in, it might give you a chance to track learners' behavior, how they are behaving in a learning scenario, in a learning environment. If it is a face-to-face, -face, you know, uh, there are various te techniques and tactics that you use to assess their behavior, to track them, how they are doing, but to some extent. But when it comes to online, okay, when it comes to blended mode, so when a teacher and some students are registered in a class where you can track the learners' login time and logout times and then how, how many times they interacted with the content, how much time they spent on that particular content piece and how many attempts they made, Okay, each attempt, what kind of a grade they got. All these are possible. Again, it depends on the kind of environment that you are in technological uh, environment that you are in, in a technology enhanced learning. And also, it uh, gives us an opportunity to communicate, not only one-way communication that is a passive, but also active. That is, you can receive some information from learners too, right? how uh, the course is doing, or uh, if you ask to share their views about certain things, about a project, right? They can communicate with you. That is possible. So even content when you design, okay, depending upon the demand of that topic, you can design the way they can communicate with you. The, t the students communicate with you, not only a teacher communicating with the students. Okay, now again, uh, one more question to you. Shall I share a whiteboard here? Examples of any interactive content that you use in your teaching learning environment. Anything. Like, let me share a whiteboard. I, I just want all of you to uh, write over there. Okay, I'm sharing that whiteboard now.
yeah, I shared. I hope you all can access it now. Yeah. So you can take the text tool over there. And let me type in that uh, question that I just asked. Examples of any, any interactive content that you use in your teaching learning environment. What kind of interactive content? Somebody said they uh, display some. Okay, somebody uses. You are you are telling about the tools. Okay, the content that you use. I'm asking actually. You can take the text option. Okay, go down and take the text option and type instead of writing. Not the name, uh, you just uh, type that answer. Examples of any interactive content that you use in your teaching learning environment. Already somebody responded earlier too. यहाँ पे हम पूछ रहे कि क्या कौन सा इंटरेक्टिव कंटेंट आप यूज करते हैं आपके टीचिंग लर्निंग एनवायरनमेंट में अगर टेक्नोलॉजी एनहांस लर्निंग पॉसिबल हो देन अगर नहीं है तो अगर समबडी रोट हियर फेट सिमुलेशंस ओके फाइन बट देन हाउ डू यू डू यू यूज देम इनसाइड अ क्लासरूम डू यू हैव दैट फैसिलिटी Please type in. Okay. Okay, interactive panel and then show them the simulations. Okay. Okay, you display uh, PPTs and you use canvas. Okay, so you're using technology. Okay. Okay, so everybody here is talking about technology enhanced learning. Okay. Somebody in the chat, 3D models and PPT. So everything is about uh, technology here. Without technology? I'm just curious, okay. Do you use? I'm not just I'm just not asking debates and puppets. Puppets, do you use? Then it's fantastic. Debate, discussion, you, you may call it. Mm -hmm. Lab practices, they're fantastic. Yeah. Puppets for stories. Okay. Model making. Okay. Group discussions. Yeah, these are all comes under interactions only. Role plays. <laughs> okay, quiz. Okay. Art integrated learning. Actually, I'm uh, pretty much interested on this art integrated learning. Recently, we worked on this. Um, chat board, okay. Toy based, okay. Story making, yeah. Good, very good, very good. So this is how we gather a lot of information. Like you learn from each other also sometimes like this. Yeah. Yeah, okay, live worksheets and simulations. Yeah, when you have technology enhanced or technology enabled classrooms, this is all possible. When it is not, that still it is possible 
to in make it more active to make uh, it more engaging also right so now i will close the whiteboard games for math okay yeah definitely definitely when we give them a choice and a chance for them to interact with okay they they definitely they do understand that is what we are making them actively uh, participate while learning learning by doing we call it doG profiles okay yeah this is all with technology enabled learning okay let me close the whiteboard now I'm closing. Okay, let me uh, share the screen again. Okay. So whenever uh, we talk about interaction or interactivity, you know, let the situation demand. Because we know certain tools, because we know technologies, because we have as a teacher, I have an access as a teacher, because I have access to uh, the technology, uh, because I gain some knowledge, please uh, avoid adding interactivity just for the sake of it, because I know or because I knew or because I have access, because I like it. No. First, this situation should demand like and also you should know your learners your learner needs in the kind of environment that they are in okay then you have to proceed and you have to select the interactivity and also your content should demand for the interaction okay if it is a long text that you want to present instead of it if you think creatively, you can present it more interesting with interactive content, no doubt about it. Even then, you need not to select every option that is available in that particular situation to create that interaction. For example, let us take in a face-to-face -face classroom. Somebody said the story making or somebody said puppets, right? So because I have to use some interaction, no, if that story really demands and also like make that puppet talk to your students and gather some information and reply to it, right? And that also, the, the content should demand. The creativity also should, should, should be in line with that content and the level of your learners. That also matters. Similarly, even in a technology enhanced classroom too. So today, our topic is more about technology-enhanced classroom and then how we can create and how we can uh, share that particular content piece that as a teacher, we create. That also matters. Okay. I will try to reduce my talk and I'll try to uh, give more time for the tool um, so that we can practice and you gain much uh, inputs from me. Uh, on that particular interactive tool. Okay, coming to the interactive content building. Okay, we talked a lot about interactive content and there are various ways that we want to uh, interact with our students to communicate with our uh, students or learners, you call it. So, but then how do you build? How do you create? Okay, there are some tools called authoring tools, we call them. You author the content, that's why it is called the authoring tool. Okay, you create that content, you author, you are the sole owner of that particular piece of content about not only how the interaction happens, uh, the design of it, but also how the content responds to your users. That also you will be designing it as a teacher. Right. So there are various tools that among them I listed many, many here. Most of them are um, proprietary ones. Right. There are there are proprietary tools. There are open source tools. There are freemium ones. Right. So what is the difference between these two? What, what is what exactly is a difference between a freemium and an open source? Any technology that is open source, that means 
that entire code that application is built on, that code is available to public to enhance its functionality if required and also to match uh, the look and feel of it according to institutional colors or, or the content, right? So the look and feel of that environment so you can change. And also you can change the functionality of it, but then you should have expertise. You should have resources to do that. But definitely that the entire code, back end of that code is available to you. But when it comes to free tools, right? When it comes to free tool, that means the application is already built over there. Some sort of login information is required. You log in over there. You create, you use that tool to create some content over there. But then you cannot really access that backend code of that application and you cannot change the way you want it or you cannot enhance it. And also there might be some charges for proprietary tools to use them. When it comes to open source tools, the tools are open source, definitely. The application is open source. It is available freely to you. But then where will you keep it? That means in, in technology language, where will you host it? You need a machine to host it, right? Whether it is in the cloud or in your institution, you need a machine to host it. That's where you pay the money for. Okay, the tool is as such, it is free. Examples are many of them. Here we can uh, uh, take an example of um, H5P. That is what uh, today our coming entire till five o'clock, we will be talking about it. What is H5P? How we can uh, author content? What are the various ways that we can create? What are the platforms that are available to create freely? Or there are software as a solution options where all we can create the and what type of contents that we can create, we will talk about it. So the tool name is H5P. The tool is called H5P. The name came from HTML5. HTML is a hypertext markup language in computer parlance. Okay, so that is a language which is required any um, content to view using a browser. Okay, so what does it mean? H5P requires a browser to view the content that is created using this application, the tool called H5P. It just requires a browser because it is built on HTML5. Why H5P? It is open source. And it is easy to not only to create, to build, to author, but also to use as a learner, as a student, also to use as a teacher. And it is easy to disseminate, to easy to share, easy to modify it. And moreover, it is responsive. What, what do we mean by responsive? It responds according to the screen size that we use. We just talked about the learner's needs, right? Whenever we create some content, the technology that we use, we should be at least catered to 90% of 95% of our students, or we must say 99% of our students that who can access this particular piece of content. When you create interactive content with the H5P, they just require any browser to view the content. Okay, there are some tools now, um, uh, proprietary tools, they require their own players to play the content. Not uh, every tool plays just using a browser. They need a player to, uh, that will ask the users to download that player. Then only they can play that content. And we don't know when we are catering to our learners whether they have the player or not, right? So that way, one more advantage of using a H5P is that it is responsive. That means any kind of a device that it can display easily fit in uh, in that resolution. And um, most of the devices and uh, what which uses a browser, you can use that content authored using H5P. So what we can do with H5P? 
you can create many interactive content varieties. One of them is interactive, a popular one is interactive video, where you can add various types of interactions from true or false questions to um, drag and drops, or you can provide some learning elements like uh, images or for extra inputs and information, some tables, uh, or and some you can provide just somebody already wrote that they use um, labeling the content uh, when I asked about interactive content. Also, some advanced to fill in the blanks that you can create. But then how do we know how many varieties are there? How many types of content types are there? Okay, there are many. If you observe here, this is called the advanced to fill in the blanks where um, you can give a feedback highlighting certain part uh, of that particular piece of a question that you provide. Okay, but there are more than 48 varieties, around 50, they claim, HYP claims that there are 50 varieties of interactive contents that you can develop, you can author using H5P. But then as part of my, one of my free uh, open projects, I thought of this periodic table way of for displaying all the varieties, all the contents that um, types that you can create using H5P. I will share this with you all um, very soon. Um, I, I just created this uh, periodic table and then gave life to it using H5P, okay, interactions. So what does this table convey? The blue ones are all just a presentation tools that you just can present. Okay, and then our uh, green ones are most like more likely like uh, to engage our learners a simple task. Yellow ones are completely tasks to present uh, some assessment. Okay, and then orange ones are like around six of them that where you can not only present the content along with that you can also present give them a task inside that presentation. The pink ones are audio ones. Okay, and uh, white is in a beta version. There are many more actually in a beta version actually. And then uh, there is also an option to create a QR code directly inside you. So you can ask me that there are many other uh, tools that they give us an option to create these kind of uh, QR codes or any kind of uh, information, but why H5P? Every tool has its own pros and cons, right? So we just talked about why H5P? So we are using this, our content is with us. We can host our content or we can utilize um, a platform that is freely available to create content or we can use a desktop application also to create content. Okay, we'll see this in detail um, more about these various content types. We'll also practice one of the easiest ones. And what is the difference between uh, what is so special about these orange ones are either a column, either you take a course presentation or a branching scenario or an interactive uh, book or an interactive video. What is it? Because these six of them contains most of these uh, yellow ones inside them. So you always have to start small first. You can't really jump directly onto these orange ones. I advise uh, when you are a starter, you better start with these simple yellow ones, okay? Talking to uh, uh, how and where to create H5P interactive content. Let me first tell you that uh, H5P.org is a community site for H5P. Its main purpose is only to provide uh, who are new to H5P the examples and the documentation to these tools. Okay, let me be very clear. Many of you, uh, they use H5P.org to create content. No, that is not a, a site to create a real time content. That is only a community site. The purpose is only to provide examples and documentation and more information for the new users. Okay. So what are what you need? Either you need a HYP enabled website. Okay. Or you need a software as a service plan from HYP.com. What is the difference between these two? Let me tell you. 
Uh, HYP free plugin is available for WordPress and also for Drupal. I think also for Joomla. So when you have a website of any of these and then you can have a free plugin, okay, uh, HYP plugin, and then you can start authoring your content. Or what you can do, you can have, you can purchase a plan in hyp.com. What do they do? They host your content for you in their server. I told you all open source tools require sometimes a machine to host the content. Or if any of your institutions or schools have a learning management system like Brightspace or Canvas or a Moodle, you will have some options to use H5P plugin over there. Okay, then if somebody says, I don't have a site and I cannot afford hyp.com SaaS plan or neither I have a learning management system, what you can do? What you can do is you can download a desktop application called Lumi and you can use them on your machine, local machine, only to author the content, not to distribute. You can distribute, but then using some other medium, right? Also, there is a cloud option of this Lumi application that is called Lumi Online or one of its kind and very first one in India for Indian teachers. Actually, uh, there is a, a repository called hypcatalog.in where you can register over there and then you can create content. But the only the trick over there is you have to repurpose some content to create interactive content. Okay, so you can register over there and then you can send us mails and then we, we will organize some even a free courses for you to enroll or some workshops to create HYP content and then share it publicly with the open license in HYP catalog. Even in Lumi online, you can uh, share the content with open license. We will practice in Lumi online only today. Okay, I will take all of you step by step because many of you are using also smartphones. That's what I observed. So it works. Lumi online, Lumi cloud option works in smartphones too. Okay. And then talking about again, um, HYP and then sharing HYP content either through an LMS or a content management system like WordPress, uh, or uh, you can always download and recreate and uh, modify and uh, reuse them. Or you can uh, create your content as a HTML file in your Lumi application and share it with your students, right? But then respect copyright. You can create multimedia presentations, videos, multiple choice quizzes, drag and drops, image hotspots, options are many. But then respect the copyright when you are downloading from any repository and you many of you are already aware of open licensing. So you better attribute that and then uh, see the license compatibility and use them. Okay, how about um, how it looks like in if you have a learning management system? If you have a learning management system like Moodle, uh, in Moodle especially, we have an option called Content Bank where you can go to Content Bank and then create your content and then reuse and repurpose and modify it. If you are using in Moodle, then you can uh, track the learner's attempts, whether they completed it, whether they succeeded, that means success in the sense, what is the score they achieved and the maximum score they achieved, whether they achieved a maximum score or they did not achieve. That's the difference between completion and success. And then you can drill down the reports much more. Every attempt, uh, when did they do and how did they do, how many correct and how many wrong. You can see the attempts. When it comes to Lumi desktop application, which we are not really using today. If there are uh, people who are a little advanced learners, if they want to use it, you please go through. But today we will be doing on Lumi Cloud. Okay, I will uh, discuss with you all. I will share a few videos in the break time. You can watch it and you can download this desktop application. The advantage with this uh, Lumi desktop application is that when you use this, you can create content and then you can export it as a, HTML5. That is the advantage when you have a Lumi application. Remember, don't get confused. Lumi is not a tool. Lumi is an application to create HYP content types. 
Okay. Um, so many of you will get confused. It's a Lumi content. No, Lumi is just a platform cloud that it is providing us. If it is a desktop application, it's just an application which is giving us an opportunity to create H5P interactive content. Also, um, in a very nascent nice stage is Lumi Analytics. Okay. Uh, enthusiastic people, you can go and see what is Lumi Analytics is all about. What is it is that when you create a HTML file and then when you include a reporter while, um, let me show this. So when you include this reporter, when you enable this and they will see a small file as uh, Lumi uh, file over there when you send it to user as a HTML file and then they can uh, download it with their name and they can send it to you back and then you can open all of them uh, uh, all the those files which your learners have sent and then you can put it on one folder and open in Lumi Analytics in your desktop application and you can see the analysis of it. So uh, I think we will take a small pause here and I will share some information and also take some Q&A before we uh, embark on to the activity session where um, hands-on session where we will create some interactivities in Lumi Cloud. Let me share in the chat some links for you all. Um, okay. So any questions as of now before I post? Uh, you can post. In this way. Okay. Mm. I'll be posting one video here. Please follow that and create an account in Lumi Cloud. Where is this chat gone? Oh, is chat disabled or what? Okay, there is. Okay, there are some questions. I just, just che checking how to use whiteboard in online classes. I didn't understand this question though. Whiteboard is about, all about in Zoom. Okay, if it is about Zoom, yes. I don't know about, I have a premium version, but I don't know how free version works. Okay, so uh, there is a link that I posted here. Uh, anyway, I'll take you through uh, the process also. And uh, this is about how you uh, register. Using Lumi Cloud, we will be using it. Uh, please create an account over there. Let me share my screen. Any other any other questions? Huh, that's what I also want to tell you. I think uh, Ramesh sir only earlier also talked about eva evaluation or assessments. H5P is not for a uh, serious uh, assessments. It's only for uh, formative ones. Remember that. And unless uh, maybe in future we'll go with it when it is a SaaS plan or in any LMS integration. H5P.org. Uh, what do you mean by H5P is maybe H5P.org, Ramesh sir. But it is not advisable at all. That content, even when you are, when you when you click on embed, also it will say that this content might change any time. And also, all the content that you create in h5p.org is not permanent over there. And then every content that you created over there is going to be shared with CC by C or CC by license in OER Hub pretty soon. Okay, and then sometimes they might even. Or remove 
the content to. It is not, it is only to practice a new content types. Earlier, we used to get access to all the 50 varieties, but not now. Even if you check, go and check in hyp.org, you won't be able to access all the 50 varieties of content types that are available with H5P. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, even in uh, Corona period, uh, Lumi is even then it was available, sir. Yeah, even then it was available. Lumi online. Yes, uh, I, I know what you're talking about before Corona, actually. Before Corona and two years before uh, Lumi was not there, then people crazily used hyp.org, even though um, me kind of a person's really, really alerted them not to use. You should have a WordPress site uh, to practice, right? Yeah. So you can, that is the that is the beauty of this H5P content. You can always download them, right? Um, and then uh, you can upload it to a repository if it is uh, copyright friendly, uh, or you can um, use it a Lumi Cloud now, upload them there. That is my sincere request. I just sent you a video, how to register. Uh, please watch that video. So go to lumi.education, app.lumi.education. There you can click on register and register with your email ID and you will get a link. Um, please click on that. So accept it and then come here again and log in with your password. And then you will be able to see the screen like this public content, create new content, upload your content and yeah. If you are the first time here, first timer, because I have already some content, it says my content. Let me see the chat. Uh, that is because you didn't use, uh, um, you didn't use a, a, a proper link, ma'am. I'm posting the link here. I just posted a video, how to register, please follow that. It will work with smartphone, no doubt about it. This is the URL. If you just search for LUMI, it might give you some other results. App.lumi.education. How many of you are ready? Great. Done. Fantastic. Good. Let us see as many as possible because at least I could see that there are 30 people who haven't heard about it. I hope you are clear uh, with basic information intro about the tool that we are talking about very good sir you created an account i hope not in hyp.org great now if i ask a question to you all that do you know the basics of h5p have you heard of h5p then you must say yes i think Okay, account created, email ID verified, fantastic. Yeah. Nice. 
Only what it requires is your time and patience. Uh, this is very easy and uh, the platform also or wherever you are in while authoring H5P content, uh, you'll have help on your fingertips. Okay, everywhere the tutorials are available. Free tutorials are available. You can click on the help files and need it. Yeah, that's why we will practice today. Uh, okay, one question to you all here is, any of you use uh, any learning management system? Because I can answer if you have some queries about it. Any of you use any learning management system? If yes, then uh, let me know in the chat. Okay. Around 19 people. Twenty are ready. Customized test for students. Okay. I didn't understand. Maybe you use any application or for assessment, maybe Tasnima. Igno SLM is what? Okay, question again. Uh, okay, Bharatama ma'am, username contains invalid characters. There might be some uh, language issue or uh, the spaces or a hyphen. So, okay. Okay, you make your assessment papers. That's fine. My question to you all is whether uh, you use any learning management system. So any any learning management system you use, that's what I asked. Yeah, Bhartama ma'am, please remove the spaces you will be able to. Or if you are using uh, Telugu or keyboard. Okay. Also verify your address, sir, please. I asked my question again, sir, Ramu, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay, fantastic. So now we'll go on to it. I'll show you. I'll explain you uh, how the interface of it. Okay, fantastic. Ravi Shankar Reddy Garu. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Good question. Can we save and use? Yes, very much. And also, I will explain you uh, clearly what is the benefit of H5P is as an author, if you allow them to download or also uh, if it is an openly licensed material, they can download and repurpose it too. Right? Yeah. Reuse it. Yes. And also when you create in, see what happens is in such kind of a cloud environment, free environment, right? Maybe initially they might give you free. Later it might go to freemium also. Maybe later also once Lumi really get unmanageable content like hvp.org now because initially they give you an option but then everybody asked for a free, free, free thing and then uh, they might give you some uh, payment options too. And then uh, you, you don't lose the content as such. You, your content will be there. You can download and reuse it, repurpose it. Or you can use a desktop application also to store them, to open them. I will explain clearly about all these things. Okay. Also, I'll show you the desktop application option also. 
because that works with people who just not have any technology enhanced option or it's always good idea when you have an option to um, yeah say yes uh, i'm sorry i'm not able to pronounce your name self grass yes i downloaded one material but cannot open yes hyp material is only opens with um, the application that supports H5P, that is Lumi desktop application. So in Lumi desktop application, yes, you can uh, uh, generate a HTML file. Then you, with just a browser, you can open it. Okay, I hope I cleared your doubt. Yeah, Narendra Reddy Garu created. Rasina ready with Lumi. Very good. Yeah, HTML. Yes, you can save it as HTML. Export actually, not save. When you save, it will be H5P package. When you export it, it is you can export it as a HTML also in Lumi desktop application, not on a cloud. But today we are using cloud here. I will demonstrate desktop application also. Um, but it requires your PC to be 64-bit. And uh, why cloud is because uh, I saw, I observed, I asked a question in the form that mean uh, whether you are attending with laptop or a smartphone, if everybody says laptop, then I would have taken a desktop application, but most of them are using smartphones. Fantastic. Looks like all the 30 are here. Let me share my screen now. Okay, when I say login, okay. So uh, you might have your public content, create new content, upload your content, right? Uh, my content is that I already have some content here. I shared some links, that's why I have some links over here. If you see the interface here, let me first explain you. On the right-hand side, um, my profile, and this is uh, interestingly, last time somebody asked me, why not Indian flag? The moment I shared it, uh, I really liked uh, the way they responded it, the keenly they are observing, right? Because this is a language. And then, as I said, it is uh, um, what we call uh, open source software. You can volunteer to translate it translate the H5P also or a Lumi also. And then if at least 99%, if the language is translated, then they will accept. There are around 400 strings pending in Telugu. I am volunteering it to translate. Okay, so that once it is done, maybe the language will also be available here. And this is the help option. But on the left-hand side, you will see the profile and links the same as on your dashboard over here. And then uh, public content and uh, my content links deployments, which means that uh, once you create a content, you can deploy the content using a link. This is for a future use that you can see the analysis and analytics of it. What is a flow? Flow is that that uh, you say um, a group of it, a group of content that all your science content is one flow or your Telugu content is one flow and the, all your uh, uh, social content is one flow. That math is one flow that you can create. Okay, this is the interface. I hope all of you are here. Bhartama ma'am, are you there? Let me see the chat. Okay, there is one doubt. Can we evaluate Ravi Shankar Redigaru? Can we evaluate performance mass number of students at a time and award marks with a single click by using H5P? Okay. First thing first, evaluation finals, uh, that is your summative assessment. For summative assessments, H5P is not a tool. First, as of now, as of now. Okay, especially in these free options as of now. Okay, that is for formative. And coming to awarding marks. This is not a manual grading. It is auto graded one. Yes, it is possible. You can deploy at a number of people. Next, uh, with a single click, yes, it is possible. You can deploy. 
If you want more drill down reports, either you should have a learning management system or you should have uh, a site with your WordPress or a Drupal site with a free HYP plugin. And then you can create your reports over there. Or you can have an account with HYP.com where you can see the uh, drill down reports of users. Yes. Okay. So am I clear about this doubt, uh, uh, Ramu Garu and Ravi Shankar Garu? Lakshmi Garu. Be Lakshmi Garu. Yeah. Did I clear this doubt? Did I answer your question? Did I answer your question, sir? Please respond. Ravi Shankar, sir. It is possible, definitely, but this is not for your um, summative one. Formative one, yes, you can do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Coming to the screen here, we are in um, public content, my content, create new content and upload shared links. When I click on this create new content, okay, I can always close this so that I'll have more space. I just use this button. Okay, when I hover this, there is a button over here, mini menu. If I click on that, if I enable it, my left-hand side links are there. If I disable it, that is clicking on it again, and then it will disappear. It will just display all my icons on the left-hand side. This is the interface this is part this part is called your hyp editor hyp editor okay this editor is similar even when you use as a plugin in a, a wordpress or a drupal or even in a learning management system or if you use a lumi desktop application the interface the interface of this editor is same Okay, editor is the same. Okay, these are the various content types that you have. All the 50 varieties of it. You can sort them uh, as popular first or newest first or A to Z. That is alphabetically you can sort them. Okay, and then you can, if you know, if you know your content type, the content type is the 50 varieties that we talked about, that content type, you can directly type here. Okay. So one more uh, thing when you use any learning management system, a button here that displays is that share your content with OER Hub that is coming soon. Um, Open Educational Resource Hub, Interactive Resource Hub that you can just simply uh, not only share the content with the world, with the open license, but you can also search for the content directly. That option is also here in Lumi Cloud. I'll show you later. Okay, but not with, uh, here we don't have that button, but on an interface, on a dashboard, you have for search. Okay, right-hand side, you will see that there is an option to pub make it publicly available with the open license. You can, the moment you enable it, you will see the drop down, and then you can select the open license. I hope you are aware of all six open licenses and two public domain tools. Okay. And this is the language. Okay. It, it might take end of this year that Telugu should appear. I'm pretty sure I want. Okay. Coming to this deployment, I'll show you how it looks like. Once we create the content, you will have an option to download or a delete or a save it. Or you will have an option to embed on your uh, HTML page or to publish or deploy to your students. These are the help files that is given to you for all these three. This is the beauty of um, the H5P that everywhere, every minute you will find these help files. Today, we will start with a simple mark the words. Okay. We, we always have to start small to build a huge building, right? You have to start small, think small. And then you can build huge. So we will talk. We will talk about these yellow ones. Okay. Then when you master these, then you will understand the others. So okay. When we click on this, mark the words. 
And this interface again differs from content to content type. For uh, mark the words, this editor will be different. For drag and drop, editor will be different. For uh, interactive video, the atmosphere or the editor or the interface is different. And also the settings will differ. Okay, let me see the chat. There is something. Okay, they just logged in. You're all on this page, right? First, I'll demonstrate it. And then we'll take a break and then you can create title. Sample. And then can anybody give me um, open educational resource that you found for your subject? Any text material that you found um, that which you want to create a mark the word. How this mark the word works? Let me first tell you. Uh, you will provide a, a paragraph, okay? And then you will ask your students to identify those keywords in this paragraph. Or maybe you can say that identify the verbs in this paragraph. Or you can ask identify names of fruits, identify names of colors in this paragraph. Read the paragraph and identify the names of colors or identify the adjectives. Right. Or if you are teaching science, then uh, um, maybe you can uh, say that identify the uh, molecular bond names or, or complex bonds um, that is recited in this uh, particular piece of paragraph that you can ask them. So if you want to see how the example looks like, you can always click here. Or if you want to see the tutorial, you can always click here. Let us see first the example. This is the example. Click the various types of berries mentioned in the text below. Okay, if I say wrong, for example, see it. And the marking is automatically provided. So who will decide whether to show the solution or not as an author, teacher? See, this is in hyp.org. Let us go back to our uh, Lumi cloud. Okay, here, you, if you want, if it requires, you can add a media related to that paragraph also. When it comes to universal design of learning, we say that provide the content in various modes, right? You can always give a picture and then talk about it. Or you can talk, uh, give a image uh, or a video and you can, talk, uh, you can talk a paragraph about it. And then you can provide the task. Okay, so what is the task? The task is identify. Okay, anybody chat, give me a voyeur. It's very slow. It's because uh, for your internet connectivity. Okay, but it doesn't require a much bandwidth though. You switch off your video. If it is on, then you should be able to. Okay, shall I proceed here? Okay, sure. So what subject or any OER that you found that you want to give me so that we will repurpose here? Did you find any open educational resource regarding your topic, either mathematics or your, uh, what is it, chemistry, physics? Language. Yeah, what is that OER that you found? No, I'm asking open educational resource that you found in your subject. Because I saw that uh, in your uh, calendar before my session, if I'm not wrong, uh, A session about open educational resources is already done. Please correct me if not, CIT team. <clears throat> yeah, I'm uh, okay. Fed simulation is fine, but then I'm asking. I showed you the example how it looks like the mark the words. Okay, right. So, uh, like this, if you want, if you find any. Okay. Identify prime numbers from the given numbers. Okay. 
Actually, you can directly use for math. There is a, already a, a nice uh, option given. You can explore that. Um, I didn't understand uh, Dr. Saumya. After public content, etc., how your present screen came? This I am sharing an example. I clicked on this example. Okay. Oh my God, how much I have to interpret what you are thinking. <laughs> there is an option called drop down here, media. Then drop down. Then you have to add if you want to. And don't upload. I always suggest do not upload any image or a video. Always use from the streaming partner like YouTube. Okay. Now uh, somebody gave me. Definitely, definitely, ma'am. I'm going step by step, um, very slow. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Uh, ma'am, can we take a break? Can we give them a tea break for 15 minutes? Okay, sure. Because uh, that is a part of our schedule. So we okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. Yes, ma'am. Sure. So we will take a break here. And uh, Prabhavati, madam, please uh, refresh your page and try to do again. Click on the mark the words. Okay. And then you will have this screen. Let's take a break. I think it's a pause of uh, 15 minutes for a tea break. Yes, ma'am. So now we'll all take a break for 15 minutes and uh, we'll meet you at four o'clock. 